As we have established several times throughout the previous courses and will mention many more times, you just don't run ads without tracking them. And so in this video, we are going to talk about setting up your Facebook pixel. Now, first of all, there are some ground rules. One ad account, one website, one pixel. No breaking that rule. You just don't have the same ad account for two websites. You don't have two pixels for one website and you definitely don't get two pixels for one ad account. One website, one ad account, one pixel. No breaking of the rules. You can break them and you can actually, uh, for example, as you can see here, I have a pixel and I can add it to a second ad account. You don't ever do that. <laughs> it's bad for many, many reasons. Just don't do it. Save yourself to troubles. Um, many bad things can happen um, and many unexpected things can happen. You're going to get wrong data, wrong reporting, many, many problems. So don't break the rules. That's the first rule. Now, here's how you create a Facebook pixel. You can create as many as you want and you can create, you can name them. It's very important to actually name them to know which pixel is for which ad account and which website, which is how I recommend you name your pixels, right? So that would be um, maybe the company or the website. And so the naming convention would be website, Ad account. Great naming convention that is. Now, once you click continue, you are going to um, be faced with a choice whether to continue managing your business or set up the pixel now. I will choose to continue to manage my business because I want to show you how it's done if it's not set up. What you need to do is you need to go to events manager. In this case, I will use the test accounts pixel, uh, which we created before because it's not set up either. And because it has an assigned ad account already, right? So here you are jumping over to the data sources, um, in events manager. You can also go through that here in uh, the little business tools menu to events manager. And from events manager, you can do various things. But right now, we will focus on setting up the Facebook pixel and we'll come back to this events manager uh, several times again to do some advanced stuff, right? So the first thing you want to do is um, here you can see the test events and diagnostics and history and settings of the pixel, uh, which might be uh, interesting uh, to you. You can also extend the transition period um, over here for those of you who already have run uh, any ads, but that's not important right now. So right now we want to go with continue uh, to install the pixel. Now there's two ways to do that you are either going to add the pixel code manually to your website, which is uh, the case if you uh, are uh, running some sort of a custom website and you're not using any platform like WordPress or Shopify. We'll get back to that in a second, but first I wanna show you how to use the partner integrations because they are better they are better for the simple reason that things change on the web and what can happen is your code can stop working if you don't update it you know bad things can happen in in short so manual is not the best option best option is to go through the automated one so in this case let's say you have several options over here. You can use Google Tag Manager. You can connect your pixel to, to HubSpot if you're running your pages through that. You have um, definitely uh, WooCommerce over here uh, could be an option or Shopify and WordPress, obviously. So in this case, 
Shopify is um, one that I'm just going to go over. So they are going to show you where to click and what to go. Um, and for example, you need to go to your online store and then you need to add your Facebook pixel ID over here and everything is automatically going to work. And in case anything changes, Shopify are going to make sure to update that and you can trust them that they won't forget and your developers and your team is much more likely to forget um, in that case. But if you trust your developers more than Shopify ones, you can also do that the manual thing as well. So you go to preferences uh, and you can add your Facebook pixel ID over there. And then once you click continue, you can um, verify the connection. Uh, also, there's another thing that we missed um, that you can do over here. And for example, you can say um, mywebsite.com and send tra test traffic over there. Um, but in this case, I won't be able to do that uh, because I don't want to send uh, traffic anywhere. And then you should get that point to become green and uh, verify your pixel. Once your pixel gets some activity, uh, you can set it up. In this case, I'll go back for now just to show you um, how to do the manual installation. So for the manual installation, you can just copy the code from here. And what's going to happen is uh, you can just simply uh, paste it somewhere. So in our case, I can make a new document, throw it over here, and we can see the code. That's what the um, that's what's going to happen. So I just want to show you some basic things that you do need to know about your Facebook pixel code. And that's that it executes only two functions. The first one is the initiation of the Facebook pixel, meaning, hello, I'm working. And then the second one is a tracking of a page view, right? So this means that when someone opens a page that contains that pixel, the pixel is going to initiate, fire itself up, and then it's going to track that page view to that ID, right? To, to the ID that was initiated. And so that page view, that page that I just opened, is going to uh, receive a hit or a page view, and that's going to be sent over to Facebook. Now that function is going to be important because we are going to be using some other functions in a second. We want to go back to our Facebook pixel setup, install the code manually, and um, we can go here to the email instructions. Most of the time you are going to have developers and you can either send them the pixel ID or the entire code, uh, which is uh, formatted a little bit better over here. Now you don't want to send that code over some shady messenger. Um, you want to send it over email. So don't send it over Skype or anything like that. Not, not, it's not that it's shady, but it can sometimes change the code because of emojis and, and so on, right? So you don't want to do that, uh, especially over Skype and you want to, um, to send it over to them. Now they are going to get all these instructions over here and here you can also find the event code for conversions. Uh, which is very, very important because these are the functions that we are going to use to track some specific cool stuff for our conversions. These are the, the so-called Facebook standard events. And as you can see, they are named very correctly. Add payment info, add to cart, add to wish list, complete registration, meaning that the person created an account, contact, meaning that they filled the contact form, um, Customize product, donate, find location, initiate checkout, become a lead, purchase, schedule, search, start trial, submit application, subscribe, and view content. Now, 
those are important and whenever you can you should use them whenever not whenever you can but whenever they represent the action that is actually happening you should be using this facebook standard events so if someone is making a purchase on your website you should be sending a purchase event back to facebook not any other custom conversion and we are going to talk about the custom conversions in a later video but that's very very important to do because facebook is going to use these standard events and match them with your targeting and help you find the people who are most likely to complete these events so in this case when you send let's find the purchase event purchase event is one of the more, more interesting ones let's zoom it up a little bit so you can see it the purchase event is the completion of a purchase usually signified by receiving order or a purchase confirmation or a transaction receipt right so when we send this function uh, in our code when someone makes a purchase they give us some money we send that event track purchase this is the developers are going to do that most likely but you need to make sure that they did it uh, once they do track that purchase you can have the value of the purchase how much money you received from that order and the currency and once that happens Facebook is going to track a real purchase event and if you set up your campaign to be optimizing for that event the purchases this is a standard event that happens to many users on many different websites and so if you set that as the optimization goal Facebook is going to try and find people who are more likely to complete that goal if you set lead as the objective for your campaign Facebook is going to try and find you more people who complete this objective um, in similar situations so that's why using the standard events is much better than using any other custom conversions another thing that I wanted to mention is that if you um, use a partner like Shopify for example definitely make sure to uh, turn on the automatic advanced matching that's one thing and second it's going to add all these standard events are going to work automatically which is good because you don't have to set them up manually but if you do need to set them up manually you can find um, the code in the email instructions over here and you can go to the page with the conversion codes and whenever you can use standard events you should uh, make sure to never forget that because it's very very important sometimes uh, we have made the mistakes uh, of using custom conversions and naming them a complete purchase and um, create an account and so on don't do that if someone is creating an account maybe try and find and try and use the complete registration event because that's um, something that can be um, more closely matched to what other uh, people did and so you can get better optimization out of Facebook and you will get better performance in your campaigns for that that's very 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 important and uh, last but not least you need to check your pixel status and the pixel status uh, is going to show up in your um, ad account once you see it and you you add it you will see either a red point or a green green point and here uh, you can have some Facebook um, diagnostics to see if, if there's any issues happening to your pixels I can't show you that right now but uh, that's what you do so when you install the code manually uh, and you copy that code you can um, put it on your website the place to put it is if we open the startup masters uh, website I'm gonna show you two other cool things about the Facebook and you click control or command U and open the source or just go here 
and go to more tools and sorry i can't see anything um and go to the developer tools over here you can see the um code of the website and in this way you can view the source now what you want to do is search for facebook and you can see that the facebook um pixel code should be somewhere here what you can do as well is search for the head tag and before the head tag is called you need to be able to find your facebook pixel somewhere here now that's generally the case unless you are using something like um um google tag manager sorry and in this case that's what we are doing so you, as you can see we, i can't find the facebook pixel code over here that's because it's hidden in the um google tag manager let's find the tag manager oh there it is so it's in google tag manager and what we want to do uh, if it's in google tag manager then we can use a very very cool extension that we use to uh, diagnose any facebook pixel problems and see what events are getting fired so that's facebook uh, pixel helper which is this cool thing over here and if we go to a specific page the facebook pixel helper should be firing up and in this case we need to disable the ad blocker as well because that could be preventing the facebook uh, pixel helper from uh, firing up and there it is now facebook pixel helper shows over here that we are uh, sending a page view event and a view content event and the micro data is automatically detected uh, which is an advanced thing that we are going to learn about in the search engine optimization course and what that micro data actually is but we can see that we are firing up the page view and the view content events now if i click here you can see that the facebook pixel did some other things it fired an add to cart event which is what we are using uh for when people um open up that form we, again take a look that we could be using a different event but in this case we are using that button as the add to cart button and you can see that the facebook pixel is uh detecting that and it does not fire the second time that's why you see uh, an error here and here i can uh write my name put my email choose a password and choose a country and in this case i will have to use a different email put my second email second name over here i can't even fill my own form and now if we go again to the facebook pixel helper you can see that here we don't have any events firing up which is something that we may want to look into or maybe it's intentional because of the way that we are handling this form securely but i just wanted to show you how the facebook pixel works and how we are using it to detect um events that facebook is using and whether or not the a facebook pixel is working another thing that's also important to mention is that um, when you set up your facebook pixel uh, you don't really get the information to facebook very quickly so it might take you maybe 20 minutes for your facebook pixel to become active and that's another good reason to use the facebook pixel helper uh, chrome extension to check if it's sending the events and if uh, facebook 
a pixel uh, helper says it, that it does, you don't need to wait and you can rest assured that your Facebook pixel help, uh, Facebook pixel has been set up correctly. Um, now, again, most important thing, one account, one website, one ad account, one pixel. Never break the rule. Second, when setting up, use partners if you can, because they will update anything that needs to be updated and you don't need to set up the standard events yourself. Best way to do it. If you have developers, best to um, email it to them if they need to do it. If you don't need to use the developers and you can set it up yourself by using a partner and using all the standard events and you can check that everything works, that's that's cool. Once you add your Facebook pixel, uh, you should be able to uh, see that it is it has received activity over here and it has been set up and that's good. If you don't want to wait 20 minutes for that, you can open up your website and use the Facebook pixel helper to check if everything is working correctly and if your Facebook pixel is sending the correct events, uh, which is how you diagnose it. Even if you give it to your developers, then you also need to go and complete all the events in the customer journey so that you can check if uh, your Facebook pixel is sending the data to Facebook correctly. And you need to do that before you start advertising every single time because you just don't do digital advertising without tracking. And that's it for setting up your Facebook pixel.